there is an errand we came to run for Jesus. To preach, to pray, and to prophesy until revival comes. And tonight we'll be scanning the heart of God to find his present revelation position in the spirit. It's a privilege to be numbered in the Lord. And we give him great thanks for what he's doing in Kenya. Let us pray. And so we thank you tonight. We give you praise. We exalt your name. So many people have traveled across rivers and oceans to come before your presence. We ask, O oh God, that you do something for them that will surpass the amount they spend to secure their tickets do something on their lives that will be greater than every price they had to pay to be here in Kenya. And Lord, we pray for Kenya that your mighty hand will sweep the land and the fires that you are kindling in the land will gain momentum. We pray, O oh God, for everyone that is a participant, and we ask that your hand might rest upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. Speak through my vocal cord, Lord. Think through my thoughts and bring your counsel in simple, plain language as Jesus would have done if he were physically present teaching us. And take all the glory and the praise in Jesus mighty name Amen make somebody welcome to the left and to the right as you attend to your seat God bless you indeed Amen yes Bishop John C. W thank you for the privilege thank you for having us again in the nation of Kenya. Um, we like to be here. We like Kenya. Hallelujah. Okay, turn your Bible with me to the book of Genesis chapter 21 verse 26. Genesis chapter 1 verse number 26. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Hallelujah. This is an account of creation that captures a policy that was trapped in the quadrant of the Godhead. There was a special personality that had to be brought forth. It was a policy direction that was conceived in the bosom of the Elohim. He said, let us make Prior to this time, every creature that was created was so created after its kind. The guy in charge of this console reduced my volume. Every beast that was created was created after its kind, but God is expressing the policy that he has conceived in, in himself concerning a functionary concerning a creature, a creature that will not be after its kind, like the other creatures in the animal kingdom, but a creature that is developed to be in the image of God and to 
function in the likeness of God. Man happens to be the only creature that is a departure from the pattern, creating them according to their kind. So man is a departure. It means man is in his own class. Man is in his own category. And it is only when man has the image of God, it is only when man has the likeness of God, that man will be capable of fulfilling the dominion mandate. So the acid test to prove whether man was in the image of God, in the likeness of God, was that he will have dominion. Somebody say dominion. You know, we are talking about kingdom come. Kingdom come. And it is needful for us to understand that the message of the kingdom is the message of the end time. Because Jesus said, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness to all people. And then the end will come. So the message of the end time is the message of the kingdom. The message of the kingdom is the final emphasis of witness that the Holy Spirit will bring upon the earth as God begins to wrap up his agenda among men. In order for us to establish the gospel of the kingdom, which is a very vast island, we must understand that the purpose for which God created man was so that his kingdom could be extended into the earth. His reign, his influence could be extended into the earth. And man was created to operate by delegated authority. Do you know the meaning of that? Delegated authority. It means that there is only one authority and the description of God within the landscape of his administration is that he is the only valid authority now that's what the Bible says are you with me now let me give you a scripture quickly because you are not following me you are not following me so I need to introduce you to a few other scriptures so that you can be on the same page with me. Incidentally, the message I am be, have been called to preach in the body of Christ is a message of the kingdom. This is, this is the message that Jesus sent me to preach among the nations of the world. Now, because I have the opportunity to preach it, in its raw state, I need to take you from the origin of the message so that we'll begin to build its basic building blocks into place. And then you will see how God intended for kingdom men to function upon the face of the earth. Are you there with me? Now, so, according to Wow, we have a lot of scriptures on that matter. And it's even difficult for me to pick which one is more strategic in bringing out the fact that in the layout of authority, there is only one authority that exists in the entire universe. The Bible says that the powers that be, and that scripture was talking about political leadership. It said the powers that be are of God. It means that God is the one that is behind political leadership in the physical terrain. Are you there? He's the one that has decided to make it possible for leadership to operate upon the face of the earth. It is his will that it so be. And that is why there's leadership in the earth. So, just in case you see that in your county there's a governor. 
That governor is an illustration. In fact, the reason why the governor even exists and operates in your county is because the ultimate power has accepted, has agreed that such leadership should exist, which is supposed to be reflective of his ultimate capacity as the governor among the nations. So in the true structure of authority, there is only one authority, and that authority happens to be God. Every other authority you see in the realm of the earth is delegated. It is God that permitted that authority to exist. That is the reason why that authority is in force. That authority is an illustration of the ultimate authority. It means that there is no throne that exists in the earth that is as high as the throne that God himself sits upon. It was in that his place as the chieftain that he conceived in his heart a vision. A vision of making a creature that was in keeping with his image and his likeness. And if such a creature manifests upon the face of the earth, this creature is going to have dominion. Now, are you there with me? I say, are you there with me? Yes. Okay, let me give you um, a little additional insight. Let them have dominion. Okay, so the word dominion in this scripture is radar in the Hebrew. Radar means if we look at all the technicalities that are associated with the word, the meaning of this dominion, if we put all the implications of the word radar into focus, it means to establish an a government to establish a country. Let them have the ability to establish government. And the authority that they'll be operating with is delegated. But that delegated authority will come into focus if there are creatures in the image of God. Are you, are you with me? And if they are creatures in the likeness of God. The only way we can define man, the definition of man is within a context. And every time you take the understanding of man outside of that context, you have created a major flaw. The context in which we can define man is the context of the kingdom of God. Because the idea that God had in mind was that man was going to be a creature that was going to be a kingdom agent that would be operating with delegated authority. He would be made a partaker of the divine nature. In order for him to represent God and establish the government of God in the earth. Outside of the kingdom, there is no definition for man. He's a rolling stone without objective and purpose. And whenever a, 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 a potential a, a, a loses touch with purpose, he finds affinity with the devil. Because of your strategic nature as a key person in the establishment and the extension of the dominion of God into the earth, whether you pray or not, you're already a target for the devil. Just because you are a man, you are a target. And I'm going to explain why, if you give me just a moment. Part of the reason why uh, Satan rebelled is captured in the book of Isaiah chapter 14. Verse 12 to 14. Are you there? You are not there. According to the book of Ezekiel, the angel Lucifer 
was the cherub that was in charge of the mineral earth. And I don't have time for those scriptures yet. Not, it's, it's not now. Maybe in the second session or third session. We will look at the graph. So this Lucifer, who happens to be like to be era, that's the name, that's the meaning of Lucifer. Are you there? Lucifer was one of the guardian cherubs of God. If you come into the Holy of Holies, you will notice that there are two cherubims that protect the glory of God. This way and this way. And Lucifer happens to be one of them. So apart from the fact that Lucifer had a jurisdiction where he governed, and the fact that he was a governing cherub is revealed in uh, what Isaiah said in the book of Isaiah chapter 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cast down to the ground which deeds weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. You see, Lucifer was a throned cherubim. He was not just a normal cherubim, he had a throne. And every time you see a functionary in the kingdom of God that is enthroned, it means that functionary is anointed. So, and that's why he's called the anointed cherub. I know you don't understand what I'm saying, but I will explain. Um, have you read the book of Psalms 110 before? How many of you have read it? Do you still remember it? The Lord said unto my Lord, sit down at my right hand. Okay, so you have read it. So let me explain it to you. Because whenever we talk about throne, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. It means that this Lucifer had a, an area that he exercised administrative dominion over. He was not just a normal cherubim. Yes, he was one of the guardian cherubs, but the, the Bible called him an anointed cherub. And in the entire scripture is the only angelic being that was said to be anointed, making him the number one in rank among the angelic beings that God created. And this guy was given a throne. It means he sat in administrative capacity. And he took care of some of God's business. The details of the business that he took care of I don't know the details, but I know a few of the business that he took care of while he was the guardian of the Midnara Earth. Are you still with me? Now, this Lucifer, this Lucifer, he had a dream. He said they would exalt his throne above the stars of God. Now, I need to explain to you why he was called the anointed cherub and what it means for a cherub to be anointed. In fact, the proof that he was anointed was because he had a throne. In Psalms 110, from verse number 1, the Bible says, The Lord said unto my Lord, that means the Father was speaking to the Son, He says, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So this was when Jesus fulfilled the requirements of redemption, he satisfied the claims of divine justice and he came back into the heavenlies. Upon arriving in the heavenlies, the father began to speak to him and to assign him to an administrative capacity. And that's what my right hand means. He said, you would sit in administrative capacity until I make thine enemies bow at your feet the next question we need to ask is how god intends to make the enemies of jesus to bow and that's why the next verse comes to mind verse 2 
The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. If you are a scholar of the Bible, you will know that this scripture is the scripture that Peter quoted on the day of Pentecost as the justification for the day of Pentecost. So the rod of, of God's strength that is spoken about in verse 2 actually refers to the Holy Spirit. So how is God going to fulfill his promise to his son? The promise of making the enemies of Jesus to bow at his feet. The way he's going to do it is that he's going to send the Holy Ghost out of heaven. And he's going to send the Holy Ghost not as a spectator, but as a ruler. Rule thou. The matching orders that the Holy Spirit was living heaven with was the orders of dominion. Are you still with me? Rule thou in the midst of dying enemies. You see, you have not seen what I wanted you to see. Jesus was assigned a throne for him to sit. Are you there? And then the Holy Spirit was going to go into the earth. The Holy Spirit was actually a confirmation. His going into the earth was a confirmation that Jesus has been enthroned. Do you are not following me? How many of you still remember Moses? Moses was on the mountain top, and if Moses lifts his hand, raises his hand, Joshua will begin to conquer the enemies in battle. And when, when, when Moses drops his hand, Joshua will begin to lose in battle. And M Moses was the shadow of the messianic spirit, indicative of the fact that the moment Jesus is exalted in heaven, the Holy Spirit will be released. That's The Holy Spirit is Joshua. He will be released to conquer. So it's the exalted Jesus, the exalted Jesus that is responsible for the conquering spirit. Are you there? Meanwhile, he was given a throne. And the physical evidence of that throne in the earth was going to be a spirit. Think about it. Oh, you're not here. The proof, for instance, the proof that I have a throne in God's administration is that there is an anointing that is at work in my life to, to effect a certain purpose that is on the heart of God. If that anointing is established upon my life, it is a proof that I also have a throne. Because Jesus was given a throne, and the evidence of that throne was a spirit that went down to war. Are you there? So if we call Satan there, if Satan, sorry, if Lucifer has a throne, then he also has an anointing. And that's the reason why he was called the anointed cherub. So every time you see an anointing, it is the manifestation of an authority. It's the manifestation of government. It's the manifestation of authority that is at work. That's how thrones manifest. They manifest as the concentrated presence of a spirit. Did you get that? Oh, it seems I'm going too fast. So the reason, the reason why, for instance, I have an anointing on my life is not because I'm, good, I'm a good guy. I have an anointing on my life because of an administration that is taking place in the heavenlies. It is that administration and the throne that has been assigned to me in that administration that is manifest as an anointing on my life. So we cannot define man outside of his role in the kingdom. Your potentials and your capacities can never be fully maximized if you are not under the dominion of God. And I'm going to explain some critical matters to you. And I will show you the reason why maybe your life is failing. Your life might be failing because of one or two things. Now I got your attention. Yeah, this is what I want. I got your attention. I got your attention now. So stay with me. Man was created to function in the image of God. Image of God. 
first of all, I will use an elementary definition for image before we move into the definition of the image of God in the New Testament. How many of you have ever seen a glove before, hand glove? A hand glove is in the image of a hand. And the reason for, for which it was manufactured was that it was intended to play host to a hand. So you are created in the image of God because you were created with a capacity to contact God, to contain God, and to express God. So the image of God has these three connotations. Even if an unbeliever comes here and will begin to worship, and worship, he has the capacity to contact God. He will experience the same presence you experience because he can contact God. It is because he can contact God that he can be saved in the first place. The reason why he can contact God is because he's created in the image of God. But the purpose for which you contact God is so that you can contain him. And the purpose for which you contain God is so that you can express him. So you have the capacity to contact him. You have the capacity to contain him. You have the capacity to express him. Is that clear? Please help me preach to your neighbor. You have the capacity to contact God. To contain God and to express God. Please take note of this definition. It is a very elementary definition. But by the time we go to the book of John, chapter 5, you are going to see Jesus. Jesus makes statements like, I can do nothing of myself. He said, my doctrine is not mine. It is whatsoever I see the Father do that I do. You are not following me. What's the meaning of that? What's the meaning of that? If Jesus says that I cannot do anything of myself, it is only what I see the Father do that, I have, that I'm allowed to do, that I do, it means the first thing is that Jesus surrendered his will to the will of his father. So even though Jesus has a will, Jesus has an opinion, Jesus was not called to be creative. He was called to manifest his father. No, you are not following me. In the book of John chapter 20, Jesus makes a statement. And the statement he makes reveals how he was sent from heaven. Because Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. So what he wanted to do was what the Father did to him before he was sent from heaven. And what exactly did he do? Hey, give me John. These people are not following me. John chapter 20, verse 21. I'd like you to look at the scriptures. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, for as my Father sent me, even so send I you. So the way he wants to send them now is the way he was sent by his Father. Are you following? Okay, let's go to the next verse. Then you see how his Father how his father sent him because that's the same way he's going to be sending his disciples then when he had said this what did he do he breathed on them and what did he say receive contain god that's what he's saying you know i told you that we were created in the image of god so that we can contact god we can contain God and then we can what express God you are following me now 
Now, I want us to get the fundamentals in place before we begin. The, there are deep aspects of kingdom reality because the influence of God over your life is going to influence how you do everything, how you do business, how you do politics, how you re relate with your wife, how you relate with money. The government of God over your life is going to influence the outlook of your life in every facet whatsoever. But we are picking it gradually. It is not even a five-day conference. Kingdom Matters, which we'll be talking about seven days or 14 days for us to really enter into Kingdom Matters. But since we're doing it annually, we'll do it to a point next year. We'll continue until every one of us is educated on how to operate under the government of God effectively. And our nations, our churches, our places of work will begin to reflect Christ. I will tell you how it happens, how, how, it, how urban renewals and national renewals take place. But I need to tell you from the cellular level first, then the alignment level of individuals, then community alignment, national alignment. And even if Satan is in the territory, Satan will have no place to operate. We can vote him out by yielding to the government that is expressly coming from heaven. If you are still with me, say, Amen. Amen. All right, so Jesus now shows up. And Jesus says, as the Father has sent me, that's the same way I'm sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive you the spirit. It means that his father breathed on him before he left heaven. The father breathed on him and said, receive the spirit you didn't get it now it means that the father was entering into jesus as the spirit so jesus was going to leave the father and you now christ has breathed upon you and said receive the spirit so you are going to leave christ oh you're not following it's still confusing to you so you'll find Jesus saying that he cannot do anything of himself because his duty after containing his father is to express his father. Oh my God. His duty after containing his father because his father breathed himself into Jesus as the spirit. So it was the spirit of his father that he was carrying. Meanwhile, we are carrying the spirit of Christ. Are you following me? So Jesus will say, I cannot do anything of myself. The reason why he's saying that is because he understands his job. His job is to express his father. So even though he has his own opinions, he has his own will, the first thing he needs to do in order for him to express his father is that he surrenders his own will and takes up the will of the father. So even though in the garden of Gethsemane, he had a suggestion that if it is my God, if it is possible, let this cup pass away from me. I know you have so much wisdom. You can manipulate this thing and exclude this cup from what is required to achieve redemption. You can do that. If it is possible, let this cup pass away from me. So you could see that Jesus had a preference. He had a will. But even though he expressed his will, he, he then went back to surrender his will again. To, However, not my will. Even though I have an opinion, I have a request, but I still submit that request to your will. That was when Jesus was praying and he thought that the cup was different from the will of God initially. Then when he continued the prayer the sec second time, continued the prayer the third time, he now discovered that the will of God and the cup was one. Have you started praying before and your perception, you had a perception, but as you entered into the place of prayer, God began to, to adjust your perception like a lens of a camera. And you started becoming more accurate. Then you now understood what the will of the Lord was. So Jesus, that was how he came into the presence of God. He thought that the cup was different from the will and as he pressed on, he now discovered that the cup was one with the will of God 
and he therefore surrendered to the cup because his preoccupation was to express his father. Do you get that? So if we are going to, that's why Jesus is called the image of God. Because in all of his life, Jesus did not say any word that was his. Jesus did not do anything that was his preference. Everything he did was what his father, he saw his father do, was the promptings of his father's spirit that he, he felt on his heart. Those were the things he did. Those were the things he said. Did you get that? That is why he's called the image of God. A time came that the disciples came to Jesus and said, Hey, you've been talking about the Father every time we, we don't have any rest. Every day you say the Father, the Father. Show us the Father and we will be satisfied. And Jesus was depressed. He says, well, I've been with you all this while and you are still saying show us the Father. Everything that I've done since you knew me was to express the Father. I am the theater upon which the Father does his displays. Anytime he wants to do something, he gives me an impression by his spirit that is within me. And as I yield to his spirit, I understand what he wants to do and that's what I do. It is the Father I've been advertising. Do you get that? The image of God. That means in Jesus, the Father was not obscured. In Jesus, the Father was not barricaded. In Jesus, the Father had full liberty for expression. Now, the, the question I have for you, does God does God have, have liberty to express himself in your verse? Is it God that is at work in you or you? When you gave your wife a slap, who was at work? It was God? Oh yeah, you are not following me. It's a difficult thing to be a man. You, you must understand. It's, a, it's, not, it's not just something you need to know intellectually. You are supposed to be the image of God. That means if God wants to manifest, all he gives you is a prompting. And then the next thing is that you surrender your will in order for him to have that expression. All he needs. And so he's in you. That's why he's in you by his spirit. Because he will be communicating with your spirit man through spirit language and giving you promptings. And then you will be doing the yielding. And as you are doing the yielding, he will be doing, he will be expressing himself through your vessel. You don't have a, even though you have a will, you don't have a right to express yourself. Because you were not created in your image. You are created in the image of God. So the moment I begin to yield to God and... I begin to function as the image of God. I begin to reflect God, begin to advertise God. It is God that is speaking through my vocal cord. It is God that lays his hands upon people when I put my hands upon them. It is God. You begin to see things that man cannot do will begin to manifest through my life. Oh, you don't get that. You are not following. You are not following me. Now, listen. Listen. I'm still trying to establish what it means when God says he wants a man created in his image. Because if we go to, on the streets in Kenya and we cannot see God on display in the marketplaces, we cannot see God in the offices, we cannot see God manifesting in the business, in the banking sector, if we can't see God in corporate organizations, in entities, in systems, upon the face of the earth, it means that a generation has decided no longer to be his image. They have found another way to operate. They are manifesting a different civilization apart from God. Do you know what? Because you are a man, you must express somebody. Is it that you are expressing God? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Whether you like it or not, you will express somebody. You were created as a prism to reflect someone. Are you there? Even when you say it is yourself, you are reflecting that, okay, I'm not reflecting God. I, I want to. That yourself, your operating, is already under the authority of Satan. That self, that, that's the fallen nature that you are manifesting. And it, it's already rigged with Satan. So that self centeredness, self seeking, dimension appetites and all of those things that you want to manifest now are falling 
Are you there? So you must reflect something. When you begin to reflect that self, it is actually the image of, death, of, of Satan that you have decided that your vessel will reveal. But you must reveal somebody. But the man that God conceived will not reveal Satan. The man that God conceived, and the example of such a man is Jesus. He revealed his father. He revealed who? His father. So the first question I need to ask you before we pick up this lecture is who do you reveal? Every time that you reveal Christ, you are actually giving God an opportunity to tell a story from heaven. Every time. Your life, please help me preach to your neighbor. Say your life in the spirit is a story that God is telling from heaven. So every time you yield to Jesus and you allow Jesus to find expression, you give God an opportunity to tell a story through your life because it is not yourself you are reflecting. It is God you are reflecting. You know what's going to happen this, this week? You will see God on display. Not by power, not by mind, but you will see God on display. You know why I'm sure of it? I am sure of it because I am willing not to do my will. I am willing not to manifest my own wisdom. I, if you know how long I had to pray to know the mind of God to teach you this evening. You see, I, 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 I am a scholar of the Bible. So I cannot lose utterance in talking about scripture. But if I want to say what God is saying, I will need to seek his heart to find out what is on his heart so that I can say what he's saying, and I'll not be saying my own words, but I'll be saying his own words. That's how God ordained man to operate. That even though you have a will, and you can say what you want, you can do what you want, but the man that God is looking for, who is going to function in his image, cannot say what he wants. He's bound by covenant. He's bound by, by intercourse and relationship with God to reflect God. So even though he has a preference, he submits his preference at every point in time to the will of God so that God can be the one on display in his vessel. So you can now see the need for man. The reason for which God created man is so that he can be known in the physical world. If we yield to him, then we become theaters through which he can be displayed. And if people see him displayed through your life, the attraction is glorious. Many people will come close to you and ask you, how are you living this life? In Antioch, the Bible says that the believers were first called Christians and they were called Christians by unbelievers. Meanwhile, in Greek, it's not Christians that is written there. In Greek, what is written in Greek is little Christs because they saw Christ manifested through their vessel. They saw Christ revealed. There were people that were operating, functioning in the image of God. So it was easy for people to see Christ. They, they could see Christ manifested in their vessel. It was a living reality. They saw men that were flesh and bone like themselves manifest Christ. And Christ became popular, even though at that time he had ascended into the heavens. But it was no longer a mystery because some men revealed him. That is what it means to function in the image of God. To surrender your will to his will. People do you harm, they do you bad. You feel like killing them. But you go to the place of prayer. Are you there? It is your fallen humanity that wants to kill them. I understand you. Huh? I understand you. But you know what? You will never understand yourself until you go into the sanctuary of the Lord. David said, when I saw, I saw unbelievers were prospering. I saw bad guys who were doing well. They, could, they were riding the best cars. And I almost lost my faith. But when I went into the sanctuary of the Lord, then I understood. Don't try to understand in the flesh. Allow the Holy Spirit to influence you. And then God will give you a witness from his own perspective then you will realize 
you will realize that you see that which you think is an advantage is a slippery ground it's a slippery ground into the lake of 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 judgment for eternity so just before you concoct the slap go into the sanctuary by the time you go there you will see that it would have been it would have amounted to foolishness for you to think you can bring a change by slapping your wife then he begins to show you how the image of God is supposed to operate how the image of God is supposed to function how the image of God is, uh, uh, hallelujah are you still with me I've been to some places before to preach and the moment I held the mic and said good evening some people began to cry good evening my brothers they broke into tears and one of them so he cried so much that when the, the meeting finished I was I was in a certain part of town and then we now met again the moment we met again it was not in church anymore we were outside of church now he, he, he started crying then later on I now asked him why were you crying that he didn't know it was the image of God something was coming out oh my god there is no way there is no way if your vessel manifests God that even a chronic unbeliever will not know that the light that shines from your eyes those lights that light is not natural there is something oozing out of your vessel so every man that you see on the street is a potential personality that is supposed to manifest a certain side of God that that God had chosen him to uniquely dispense so if you are not yielded to God what will happen is that side of God we will never see it again we'll never see it in another vessel we'll never see it because even in the new creation you are a unique species all by yourself so if you are not reflecting God if you are not manifesting God it means that the, the, the aspect of God you were called to manifest that aspect will not be known it will be blotted out for all time completely blotted out because you refuse to yield so that God could tell that story through your vessel man is a step down creature he's not an original is a miniature creature because he was created in the image of God so he himself cannot evaluate himself and say I'm successful you know why I said you know why I know most of you have been evaluating yourself by your bank account you say I'm successful evaluating your, yourself by your garage you have three cars parked and you are wrong is the one after whose image that will evaluate you because you were not created in your own image so you all by yourself cannot evaluate yourself but you were created in the image of another is that one that can now say yes you you are compliant you you are behaving like me you are operating like me he's the one that will come and evaluate your life don't be quick to say I'm successful if you have not lived out the story of God that he wants you to carry what is God saying in your vessel if that message is not clear because Paul says that we are supposed to be living epistles theaters that reveal that the God who hung on the cross and died for us is the true God and your life is supposed to provide evidence to prove that he's supposed to be seen in your vessel that is what it means to function in the image of God it's no longer I that live it but it is Christ that liveth in me so Paul will say I am crucified the me you know that is set up under the fall has been deleted by the cross that me is no longer my reality so it is crucified it is good for nothing it cannot be approximated it cannot be helped it's only good for crucifixion I am crucified with Christ nevertheless the way I live now is by a different way I live by 
yielding to the Spirit of God, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I live by yielding to the Holy Ghost so that Him can begin to reveal Christ through my vessel. I am not going to know how Christ wants to manifest through my vessel until I begin to yield. You will not know. You will not know. I was born in Stamara. You have heard my story. I was born in Stamara, so I could not speak. So my business could not be in speaking. As I began to yield to the Holy Ghost, what he did to me was that he swallowed up my stammering and said, in that area that you claim you are most deficient, that is the area and I, the Spirit of Christ within you wants to tell the story of your life. He wants to make you a teacher of truth and verity. That on your mouth, sound doctrine will be found. This was a man that was created without the ability to speak. When God began to tell me about preaching and teaching, I was saying, you created guys that could, can speak. You didn't call them to teach. Then you now created a dumb man and then you say you want him. What, what kind of stuff is that? Then I realized why he was telling me that because it was not by power. He was expecting me to fulfill it. It was not by might. He was expecting me to manifest it. The ability to do what I had no ability to accomplish in the natural was in the Holy Ghost. If you are going to be the image of God, then you must understand the trick. God set up a trick from the beginning of time. It's in the book of Romans that Paul now gives us an unravelment of that trick. In Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Let me show you that trick quickly. Romans 8 verse 26. We're still talking about the image of God. We cannot define man outside of kingdom administration. Man is one of the entities that God created to extend his influence into the visible realm. Take man out of that context. He's, he's a good for nothing entity. Your true value, you will never know it until you give your life to Christ and submit to it. You will soon know that. Don't worry. Give me time. Where did I say you should open? In Romans chapter 8, verse 20, 26. It goes, that scripture comes clean. He said, likewise, the Spirit also helped our affirmative. Can you see that God created man with weaknesses, with infirmities? In fact, I hope you know in Old Testament language, the word infirmities means sickness. I know you have not thought about it. What the Bible is saying is, you, you and me, we are sick. <laughs> we are sick of rebellion. The only thing we know how to do, that the Bible agrees we know how to do, is to rebel. In rebellion, we have ability to rebel, even without thinking about it. Yeah, he, he knows we are sick. So the Bible says it is the Spirit of God. It seems as though in the Godhead there is something like division of labor. And it is the assignment of the Spirit of God to swallow up your infirmities. That means God's idea for man is man plus Holy Ghost. And I will show you that in the Garden of Eden. How he planned for us to partake of the tree of life. So that two things can be part of our existence. Unfortunately, we chose the wrong choice. We chose the way of death. And that's why man fell. When man fell, it was no longer compatible with God, but it was fully compatible with the enemy. And it means that because Satan was able to steal away God's theater, God could no longer be known. No one could manifest him. Everyone could naturally manifest the instincts of Satan, the instincts of darkness. And Satan began to build his kingdom on earth using the tenacity of humankind. Even though God decided that he had chosen the Jews and he's going to walk through the descendants of Abraham. The book of Exodus. The book of Deuteronomy. The book of Numbers. Reveal that 
man had a problem. Because if man disobeys God, then God will now come and set up some laws. And then man will begin to disobey God again in another way. So God will come and set up laws again. Then man will begin to disobey God in another way. God will come and set up laws again. Until he set up 613 laws. And before Moses died, Moses said that the corruption of man is connected to his heart. That except God changes the heart of man, man will not have the capacity to live up to the laws of God. This is an inference. A man that has studied the psychology and the sociology of a people that were supposed to operate under the government of God. He said there's a challenge. And this challenge is with the heart of man. And that's why when Jesus came, he gave us an elaborate, an elaborate insight into the dynamics of the heart of man and how that it is situated in wickedness itself. So people prophets like Jeremiah, they prophesied that the time was going to come when God was going to give us a new heart and a new spirit within us. He would take away the heart of flesh. It means there's a heart problem. He will give us, he will take away the heart of stone and give unto us a heart of flesh. A, a heart that is malleable. A heart that can, can be influenced, that can be manipulated by the intimacy and the tender cuddling of the Holy Spirit. The reason why all of these infrastructures were being put in place was in order for a recovery to find expression, for it to become possible again for man to be willing to submit his will to the will of God and become a theater through which God can display his will to the fullest extent. Without man yielding to God, God cannot be known in this realm. Are you there? So this is what Apostle Paul says. And this is after a lot of research in the spirit. After a lot of exploration in the spirit, he, he caught this. He said, likewise, the spirit also. He helps our infirmities. Huh? He swallows our weaknesses. It means without the Holy Ghost, you are full of weaknesses. And you'll be weak in fulfilling your ultimate purpose, which is to manifest God. But the Spirit, the Spirit helps. The Spirit helps our weaknesses. So as we walk with the Holy Spirit, they are internal treatments that he gives us to treat us from the effect of the fall of man so that we can know submission again you see the, the 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 fallen man is a champion in rebellion the adam was a model for rebellion and jesus was a model for obedience so the salvation that you got by faith you are going to grow in that salvation through obedience because you are a descendant of the example of Jesus. Oh, you are not following me. You are not following me. Jesus is the example for everyone that has received salvation. The Spirit Himself, the Bible says, He helps our infirmities. We have so many weaknesses. But as we walk with Him, He begins to swallow them up, begins to help us, begins to help us beyond those weaknesses, those insufficiencies. And the reason why God designed it like this is so that we will realize that we cannot amount to anything significant apart from the help of the Holy Spirit. You see, these are structures that God has put in place in order to enhance our submission. Because it is in our submission to God that God has an opportunity for expression. You couldn't save yourself, Jesus saved you, so that you can be indebted to him. Now you are saved, you are full of infirmities, you cannot attain to the objective of God's calling, heart calling in Christ Jesus until your infirmities are swallowed. He begins to swallow you. Then you begin to look like him. You begin to, then he begins to prompt you inside because the Bible says that it is God that walketh in us. The same way the devil was the one prompting you to do strange things, prompting you to slap, prompting you to attack. Then a different prompting system begins to rise. It's God. That walketh in us, sought to walk in, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. 
He's giving you the impression that this is what God wants. And if you are wise, you will yield. And the moment you yield, He manifests. The moment you yield, He does what? The moment you yield, He does what? Oh my God. He wants you to be able to represent him act adequately in the life of your wife. He wants you to be able to represent him adequately in the life of your husband. And the way you can achieve that is that you must allow him to swallow up your infirmity. There's a way you respond to pressure in the flesh. Huh? There's a way he wants to swallow it up. That's your anger that you have allowed to go haywire. He will begin to swallow it up. As you yield to him in the place of prayer and you begin to tell him take away this anger work on this matter take away this kind of oh my god oh my god he begins to help your infirmities to the end that you become a theater that can manifest him that is the objective that is the reason for which god created you in his image because he wants to be known he wants to be seen in the earth through the vessels of men man is a theater it's a theater that is designed to manifest what has conquered his internal membrane my heart belongs to christ so my life should manifest christ in my vessel christ is a teacher is, is a teacher of mysteries and secrets in my vessel christ is educating the body of christ and calling her to the place of revival in my vessel christ is calling his church to a place of in, intimacy with him with the promise that each and every one of us that has the spirit of christ in him has the capacity to explore christ the same way astronauts explore space reveal yourself through me i don't know have you ever prayed that prayer i prayed it for many years reveal yourself I was created in your image to like what you like to despise what you despise so that when you begin to move in my vessel demanding an expression i will have no conflict with you i will yield to you and allow you even though in the natural people might call me a jew guy even though in the natural people might call me oh, a weak guy but i will accept that insult gladly if by any means it is what I need to bear in order to manifest you. That's my original purpose. I was born to manifest you. I was created to manifest you. I was not created to manifest the falling. I was not created to manifest the kingdom of darkness. I was not created to manifest Satan. I was not created in the image of Satan. I was created in the image of God. He had something in mind. He wanted me to do what? To manifest so it doesn't matter how much rage I'm overtaken by huh? I will submit that rage to him so that he can eat up my families the next time when you do the same thing you, you did that was responsible for that rage you will discover I will not even flare up again because I've advanced in, in life yes I've advanced I've advanced in my work with God. So God doesn't need serious resources to make me reject that rage. Are you there? I am advancing. I am getting better. I am looking more like God. I'm behaving more like God. I am functioning more like God because I'm created in the image of God to reflect God, to express God, to manifest God. If it is man, then the object is a screen that was designed to manifest God. What are you manifesting? Lost. The lost, the passions of this age. Is that what you are manifesting? How long will you dwell in lust? You want to do lust till you are 75? You want to do lust till you are 80? That's not the reason for which I was saved. I was saved so that I can become a container that can contain God. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. And he did what? He breathed on them. He said, contain God. Receive the spirit. Because you will become a theater to manifest me. 
That's the greatest calling of all time. That I might manifest God. Oh, my I prayed, I prayed today, I prayed today, and I prayed so much, so desperately. The reason why I prayed was because I wanted to know the mind of God. What are you saying today? So that I can say it. There's a difference between faith and the spirit of faith. Do you know? You know there's a difference? between faith and the spirit of faith because a man that has the spirit of faith is always saying what God is saying he said we have in the same spirit of, of faith as it is written I have believed huh? as it is written God believed and God speak so me myself I have believed and therefore I speak I can say what God is saying by the spirit of faith. So I begin to pray and to pray and to pray and to groan in the presence of God until I can catch up what God is saying. And that is the only thing I'm permitted to say here. That's the only thing. I have no agenda. I didn't even know what I was going to say by the time I arrived at Nairobi. But I knew that it was not downloaded yet, but it was in the heart of God. And I know the way to the heart of God. God is the original. I am just a representative. Do you understand that? I need to travel into the heart of the original in order for me to know what to say. I need to travel into the heart of the original in order for me to know what to do. Because I'm not supposed to manifest my, pre my preferences. I am supposed to manifest God. Every true man that understands what it means to be a man travels again and again into the heart of God to see the visions of God in the heavenlies. Jesus said, as I see my father raise the dead, even so the son of man quickeneth those that he will. There's an interaction between earth and heaven. That's where your, the eyes of your understanding becomes enlightened. You, you are given the privilege to see through the Holy Ghost so that you can know what God is saying and then you say what God is saying and guess what when you say what God is saying God will come and confirm those words and say those words are not his words those words are my words so people might be sitting before a preacher but what encounters them is not a preacher what encounters them is beyond the preacher what encounters them is God because the preacher did not come in his own wisdom he did not come in his own strength he did not come in his own capacity he did not come in his own knowledge he came with that which is so God to him. oh my God come with me quickly I'm still trying to explain image the image of God the image of God so God is supposed to be seen on the streets of Nairobi in the vessels of men when you hear a man say good morning that it was a river that he unlocked from his spirit and something beyond what he said flowed out of his spirit and people begin to wonder because anytime God touches man he makes man to stand back and say ah, I'm not worthy of this every time Jesus touched people do you still remember Peter he told him launch into the deep for a drought hallelujah after he used his boat as a platform to preach He said, Peter, launch now. And we were not told the message that God, that Jesus preached for the hours he was standing on Peter's boat because the emphasis was not the message. The emphasis was Peter. Mm. Mm. So when he finished the message, he said, can you launch into the deep? I heard you toiled all night and you caught, you caught nothing. And Peter was operating from experience. It was a lake, lake, lake Gennesaret. And in that lake, you could only catch if you threw your net on the left side. You could only catch if you throw your net at night. And Jesus waited for it to become 12 noon. Wrong time. And Jesus asked him, cast your net on the right side. Wrong direction. 
And the guy had enough experience to know that what Jesus was saying was counterproductive. But he said, nevertheless, what you are saying does not make sense. It doesn't make fisherman sense. But nevertheless, I die for. May you be foolish enough to say, nevertheless. I do not want my will to be done. Because I know this is your will, I will do it. Oh, oh, oh. If you yield to Jesus, you will manifest God. It will not make sense, but it will make life. The moment you obey, you have ventilation in your heart like you can never explain, like you can never understand. Then you will know that this was how I was ordained by God to live. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down my net. It's not professional to operate like this, but I will let down my net. It is not wise to operate like this, but I will let down my net. It is not in keeping with experience to operate like this, but I will let down. Can you just let down? It's him that is speaking. It is because he's speaking. Let that be enough reason for you to let down your net. Let down your net. Let down your net. I remember some people came to do me wrong and I went to report them to the Lord and the Lord said, go tell them sorry. I said, hey! Then the Holy Spirit said, you know, I am trying to teach you to behave like me. You don't know, you don't know the way I operate, so I'm teaching you. So don't resist my teaching. Go and say sorry. So I now went there. I said, you know what? I'm, I'm just sorry. This and they started crying. I've been trying to make them cry since. They've not cried. They've not cried. There was so much power that came out of my soul. He said, I want to teach you how to behave like me. So it doesn't make sense, but it makes life. It makes life. Please help me tell your neighbor, it makes life. And tonight you will encounter raw God, not because the preacher is mighty, not because he is eloquent and he has utterance, but you see, I did not come on my own. I came in the name of my father. I did not come on my own. I came by the help of the spirit of my father. It is the spirit of my father that gives me the utterance to speak his counsel, to bring his mind to you tonight. And as you listen to his mind, oh my God, you cannot escape his glory. His hand will descend because I did not see myself he sent me the image of God are you getting it if I know you have gotten it then I'll move to likeness I, I don't believe you you still understand what I mean here the image of God is supposed to express not you not your ideals but God but God but God but God that's our preoccupation. That's the reason why we are here. We are here to manifest God. Turn with me to the book of um, John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Quickly. I don't believe you've gotten it yet. When, if, I, if it enters, I will know. If it enters. If it enters. If it enters, I will know. Isobre. John chapter 5 beginning from verse 19 you will see the most intimate secrets of Jesus the most intimate secrets of Jesus and we are saying this in keeping with what it means to be the image of God you are not in charge you allow the one who is in you by his spirit to manifest. That means you cannot but fraternize with his spirit within you. Because it is spirit that teaches you what he wants to do in spirit language. And when you begin to yield, then he begins to do what man cannot do. He manifests himself, even God. Then Jesus, then answered Jesus and said, unto them verily verily I say unto you the son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth 
the father do for whatsoever he do it these also huh? do it the son likewise so the son did not know what to do the son will need to wait and see the way the father does it and then the son will now do what likewise it means that as you walk with God as you move with God you will acknowledge that there's a gap in your knowledge that gap is what will humble you and will bring you perpetually to the place of prayer so that you can perceive what he's doing in you the moment you perceive what he's doing in you and in order for you to have a name to that which is doing you must have excelled in obedience for a long time then you begin to see the pattern of what is constructed then you know okay oh, oh okay this is what you yourself will discover yourself when you begin to yield to him consistently you'll be able to understand his workings and what he wants to achieve through your vessel you will never know you you will never know your flavor you will never know your type you will never know your style God is the one that will reveal it and he will reveal it through ounces of obediences and then you'll be able to see the pattern are you are you there are you with me I noticed that whenever I came to preach and I preached about the kingdom his hand was so strong if I preach about something else he's not there then over time and I discovered ah, I was raised to be a preacher of the reign of Christ the reign of God so since then I stayed there I built my own vocabulary in English language to support teaching of this subject. I, are you following me? I went into ancient English, the medieval English, the types they speak in the 15th century, 14th century, to find power kingdom vocabulary in order to support the expression of that which he has called me to deliver to my generation. Oh, I did some work because I started understanding. So, what he wanted me to be he took obedience for the shape of that which he wanted to do through my vessel to be known to me who tell who told you you know yourself you know what he wants who told you it will take obedience for many years for you to see the shape of what he wants to build through your life you think you just stumble on it mm. you can't put a name to it until you know the story that god is telling through your vessel from heaven Maybe outside there now we have a, a cluster of books that people are available for people to buy when I come to that place. Huh? I know the ones to buy for what he's doing in my vessel. It's not every book I can buy. No, I don't have such money to waste. You, what you are preaching is truth in that book. It is not relevant to me because I know what he's doing through. Do you understand that? Is you not even know what you need, the books you need in your library. You not even know, oh my God, oh my. you'll be buying things you need to destroy. Because you have not worked with him long enough for you to know the shape of what he's doing through your face. You'll not know what to learn. You'll not know what to unlearn. You'll not know which, which of your mentors to cut off from. You'll not know which one to run away from. You'll never know until you start understanding what he's doing in your vessel. You will run to danger. You will run to death. You will run to destruction until you know what is building in your vessel. <laughs> if we take um, a questionnaire through the congregation, you will find out that some people went to some churches thinking that, eh, okay, this is what, I, something good is here. And only after five years, they ran out with scars and tears. I don't want you to lift your hand. I don't want you to. But I know what I'm talking about. You know why you, were, you joined yourself to them? You didn't know what God was doing in your vessel. So you use your eyes to analyze. That's not how Jesus operates. Jesus will need to see his father before he will understand. What do you see? You say you are the image of God? Mm, you are not following me. You are not following. The Greek word for man is anthropos. Anthropos means the being that was created to look upward. You see, the, the meaning of anthropos can only be gotten when you see the relationship between the moon and the sun. The moon doesn't have light to reflect. 
the extent of light the moon reflects is the degree to which it is angulated to the sun that has light are you following that is anthropos you were created to look upward the extent of divinity that will be flowing out of your vessel is the angle at which you can catch light catch light in god catch light in your father if you cannot see light in your father there's no light in you to reflect don't get so proud and think there's something in you to give when you have not seen the light what you will give them will be darkness that's why sometimes you can't find the moon in the sky it is there but you can't see it because it is not angulated and it has received no light you will give off no light if you have seen no light Jesus said I can do nothing of myself see Anthropos see is what I see I look upward what I see the father do that is what I do it means that Jesus could give an explanation for his actions he can tell us the things he has seen in God that is responsible for the things he did on earth and that's why Jesus had to spend quality time in the place of prayer because he had to discern what God was doing every single day his life became an epistle to his father the ways of his father were re revealed through his doctrine. The power of his father were revealed through his miracles. The mortality of his father was revealed through his resurrection. What is your own story? What have you been preaching? What is the message of your life? Who have you revealed? Meanwhile, you were created not in your own image, but in the image of another. You were created in the likeness of another the, the last time i saw you you were trying to show your neighbor that you were not failing you had two cars parked you had a, just gotten a second phd you just finished from university of nairobi and they are you know they, they put a feather on your cap and, and you know I, I salute you for your phd i congratulate you for graduating for passing through the ivory tower but when will you start living the way God is expecting you to live? When? When I was in the oil industry, I was still doing my eight hours prayer a day. Four hours because they were constructing the road. So it would take me four hours to get to the office. I was praying in tongues. Huh? I will tell God I say Satan wants me to begin to commit sin but I'm receiving grace from you so that I will never do it Satan wants me to have many girlfriends but I receive grace that's my everyday I will pray like that and then four hours when I'm coming home and I, I use that road for seven years that was why he said I shouldn't buy a car. I should be using, what do you call your bosses? Matato. Huh? What? I was using them. I had the money to buy one. Buy one every month. But I was using it to go to work. When my colleagues would see me, they were ashamed. Because I was coming down from the bus. You should be coming with um, BMW. Um, um, X5. That, that was when X5 used to reign. In fact, S5 was the status car in my office. For you to prove that you have arrived, you must drive one X5 and horn. Pua! Cabo Sante. Then you just come out. Leave the engine running. Leave it running. Hey, then the colleagues will come and open pop coke and pour on the car. Pour on the car and say, you have joined us. You have joined us. I never had the opportunity to do that. They did not know the encounters I had inside of Matato, Matato. I said, This one is a Jew. Demons are eating his money. I was cruising in the spirit. I was receiving help from God. I was, and I did it for seven years. Seven years. Some of the most iconic revelations I got, I got them in those buses. Saiko Pelike. Samakuria Abela. Oh, just going like that, and then I'm there with my daughter. As it is downloading, I am 
the, the people, the conductors in charge of those buses sometimes felt I was crazy. They didn't know that I will leave them there as conductors, but I will go to the nations of the world. <laughs> and so so many kids here. You will never know your story until you begin to yield. Then the shape, the concreteness of that which is doing in your vessel will be a pattern, will start coming out. A pattern. Because the pattern that was revealed in the life of David was the compatibility between worship and warfare. That Israel prospered in war. The most, when they prospered in worship, the most. It was the life of David that revealed that concrete pattern. That is a message that God is saying through every vessel and if you yield enough if you yield enough you will understand the message that is coming out of your own vessel you will see what the spirit of christ is is in your own life in the life of someone he might be a warrior in spirit in the life of another one he can be a man of wisdom in the economic war front in the life of another he becomes a god of signs and wonders who is jesus in your vessel who is Jesus in your vessel? That's my question tonight. The son can do nothing of himself. It is what he sees the father do. That is what he does. Because he's an image. He's an image. He's designed to reflect God is designed to reflect God he is an image can you can you can you say with me I was designed to reflect God I was ordained by God to be his address on earth so that men will see him manifested through me That's his dream. That's why he created you in his image. The son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the father do, for, for what things he doeth, these also doeth the son likewise. Next verse. For as the father loveth the son, showed him all things that he himself do it so there's a dimension of love in the language of intimacy that the father manifests to the son you see this dimension of love is intricate it is it is revealed in the privacy of the organ of your spirit this dimension of love is a commitment of God to show you what he's doing in your vessel it's just that we are not ready to listen. We are not ready to hear. We don't even give a damn. For the father loveth the son and showed him all things that himself doeth. He wants to show you what he's doing. Because you are his image. You are the only means by which he can be on display. You are the only means by which he can be advertised. God will never do anything on earth without a man. Just like it is impossible for a man to have a child without a woman. Even though these days we need to even redefine marriage. We then need to bring another Webster's Dictionary and redefine so many things in so many ways. Hallelujah. But you will still need, a man will still need a woman if he has any plans to have children. Are, are you following me? That's the same way God, if God is serious in the business of being known in this earth, he will manifest, he will manifest his encounters with the heart of man. He will cause the heart of man to enter into the harmony of the understanding of his will so that man can become the objective that can manifest his mind. So there is this, there is this, there is this deep context of intercourse that takes place between the heart of man and the spirit of God it is it can only be described as agape as love it is in this love that God reveals to the heart of man that which he is doing do you know this love 
This love is the basis of the understanding of the object of your security. A lot of us think, okay, a lot of us, um, for, a lot, for a lot of us, uh, the object of your security is that you are riding in a classic vehicle. And that vehicle is difficult to find in Nairobi. So the, your self-esteem, your self-worth is a function of the kind of car you drive. So it is a taboo for you to use public transport because you want to make an appearance when it matters most. You want to manifest in the best colors of the rainbow. You want to be seen with your golden frame. And these are the articles that make up your sense of worth. You are falling and you are lost. For some of us, our sense of worth is drawn from our security in Christ Jesus. We know that heaven and earth can fail. We know that governments can rise and fall. But there is something that is constant. Oh my God. Oh my God. Kings can rise and kings can fall. Oh, monarchs can rise and monarchs can fall. And the names of mighty men can be lost in the whole son of time. Oh, the intensity of the commitment of the spirit of Christ never wanes. So I draw my sense of worth from my intimacy with Jesus. I draw my sense of worth from the, the, the business I have with him in the spirit. Peter said to the crippled man, it's a silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have. He had something. He had something with Jesus and that thing was so concrete and so real that he could make a withdrawal on the strength of that which he had. That was where his sense of worth came from. It came from his security in Jesus Christ. Do you know this love he spoke about? If you don't know it, you are like a sheep without shepherd. Wandering through the galaxies of time without direction without hope but I know that my Redeemer lives. this love I'm talking about is an anchor is the reason for which you are not afraid of tomorrow because one that is already in tomorrow is in love with you is already in tomorrow so I'm not afraid of tomorrow Satan cannot say to me I will Satan cannot say to me that I will kill you by 9 p.m. You know what? It is not given to him. He never created me, so he cannot decide when I go bow out. Oh my God, I have no covenant with Satan. He do, you can do his worst. My security is in that love. Why are you changing the scripture? Who is this person? Who are you? Oh my God. People here don't read their Bible. Well, we are... We're ensuring that they see it so that we'll be sure that during this conference they read their Bible. Then you are quickly moving it. May you not be doing what God is not doing. Just like that guy is doing what I'm not doing. Then it's a disconcordant tune that is out of sync, out of alignment. You are not expressing what is eternal. You are not expressing what is hidden in the womb of God. Your life is not an incubator. Your life is not a a channel, a chamber of revelation and disclosures. So through you, we cannot know the new technologies of heaven. We cannot know what God is saying. We cannot know the present revelation position of the spirit because you have decided not to function as an image. You have become wise in yourself. It is this love that is the reason for which I am not afraid of tomorrow. I know this love. I, I don't have words to explain it. It is, it is an experience in the crucible of my spirit. For the Father loveth the Son and showeth him all things that himself doeth. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I went to walk on the streets today. I, I called Bishop John and I said, let's take a, a walk. And we were 
talking, I was praying in tongues. Then we'll talk small, then I'll pray in tongues. Then we talk small, then I'll pray. In. What I was trying to do, I was trying to find the, the frequency that God was transmitting. And I do that all the time. I do that all the time. I do that in my bedroom. I do that on the streets. I, I do that in the office. I do, oh my God, oh my God. It's like, it's, like, uh, it's like an adventure. It's like an adventure. I'm going on a hunt. I'm trying to hunt the mind of God. I am a hunter. Jesus. Seeking for him. And he is so excited when he knows that you are doing nothing else but looking for him. Sometimes he will just hide himself so that he can get you involved. He will just, just hide it. But he knows that even if he decides to hide himself, I will be seeking for him until I find him. Ooh. The Bible says that it is the, the glory of God to conceal a matter and the honor of kings to search it out. I belong to the number of kings. We, we search things out from the heart of God because we know that we are not our own. We are called to reflect him. So I need to haunt his heart to understand what is manifesting there so that I can reflect it. So I was on the streets just trying to figure out what he was saying, what he was doing. Then he gave me a vision. <laughs> Look at your Bible. It says, For the Father loveth the Son and what showeth him. Can you say show? That show, he will give you visions. The proof of that love is that he opens your spiritual eyes to see what he's doing. He knows that you now understand that you are his image. You were designed to reflect him. So he gives you insight into the things that he's doing. And that is a proof of his intimate love for you. That is with you. He's, he's on the same job with you. He's working the same project with you. He wants you to be enhanced, to be accurate, to be in alignment. So he shows you. Oh, when last did you see a vision of glory? A vision that was placed upon the canvas of your heart about things beyond the context of your thoughts, your learning, your experience, your knowledge. It takes you out of your mental crucible so that it can show you things that are colored with the paints of glory. Things beyond your capacity to explain. Things that you cannot learn. Things that cannot be taught. Things that you can only know if it's handed out by the Holy Ghost. You're not following me. I, I've not been able to finish uh, uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 because you don't you don't are you understanding image 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 oh jesus oh jesus oh lord oh lord oh lord i hunt i hunt i hunt i hunt for his mind i hunt to know where he stands i hunt to know what he's doing i want to know the breaking news from heaven then the most recent technology that has been crafted in the heavenlies for our generation i don't want to be obsolete i don't want to be in what god did yesterday in the old things he has done i want to be in the cutting edge of the new technologies coming out of heaven that's where i want to be so because of that i hunt for him there's a desperation and this desperation is multi motivated by a, a love inherent love is it is it is kindled like a gentle flame but it burns with intensity as long as it burns i seek i seek him he's the one that increases the intensity of this love and that's why i cannot stop looking at him you can come and cause trouble for me the reason why i will not respond is because i don't want to compromise that alignment that i have with him not because you are too strong for me to deal with but you see in attempting to focus on you I will lose that, that fire. So and I, I, there's nothing that I can give in exchange of that fire. So I am prepared to look like a fool before you so that I can keep that fire. I'm prepared to look like a Jew before you so that I can keep that flame. It's a flame of, of love, a flame of intimacy. It's a flame, quiet flame of an assurance of, of intercourse with God. It's, um, it's, a, it's a flame. It's a flame uh, that runs with the currency of, of peace and of assurance. It is in that womb that faith is born. It is in that womb that we see the visions of glory. It is in that womb 
that we see beyond our time, we see beyond our generation. It is in that womb that wisdom is found when the eyes of our understanding is enlightened. Tonight, I came to tell you that you are not your own. You were born to be a theater, to reflect his will, to reflect his ideal. There is a story he's telling and he wants to tell it practically through your vessel. And that's why he apprehended you in Christ Jesus. Oh my God, if you can give him half a chance, half a chance, half a chance, half a chance for him to have the advantage so that he can show you great and mighty things that you do not know. In the crucible of that affection, he shows you. He said, call unto me and I will answer thee and show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. My time is up. Pedis ko pama alai ko pris ko fele endoli la ko skito pre abahama lai ko palasi tonight what I want us to do is to hunt. I want us to hunt. I want us to hunt for him. To hunt in the spirit. To hunt for him in the spirit. Oh my God. Oh my God. He so sayly address ko peni kampolo alisko sasaleko brisko faminate endros keso salakuria braskito kumbelaite isko bela kundes keto bri avresko bina kante kuria babalatus e e breketali asuple bre umvalatos kito bre kumbaliske abrama kodi na kasketo mina kadabodo iko bresko seso si alaiko peda isko bela there is a name that God wants to give you in the spirit a, a name by which you will be known a name by which you will be identified for Paul we know Jesus we acknowledge but who are you she a combre a valise lebroski to bogo baka site a super lambos cadeli a brasket on the candle curia banzali a kenobon sekela a brahma kusketa bresh is kopi maniza a kabendo kontelia a kabendo si a fresco mine a fresco pamananteli eso bila kabelai komba eso briso seli join me as we hunt we hunt for his heart we hunt for his heart cry we hunt for his present revelation position do we hunt to know that which is on his mind for it is not of him that will it it is not of him that run it it is of god that show it must we hunt for light Zile. There is a story he wants to tell through your vessel from heaven. Oh my God. We hunt. Forget about your neighbor tonight. It is about him. Lord, 
Rasko Bede Kendia, Liko Brande Mosekete, I Koma Ruda Bakoskati Atambre, La Dosketo Presco Babalite, Preminatus Efelus, Efelus, Estosis of Beketamu.
the world is calling your name, Emmanuel, will you come again, Emmanuel, have the world to see your holy face, Emmanuel, when you come to reign, Emmanuel. Is calling your name, Emmanuel. Will you come again, Emmanuel? Ever want to see your holy face, Emmanuel? When you call to rest, Emmanuel. All the world is calling your name. Emmanuel, will you come again? Emmanuel, have the one to see your holy face. Emmanuel, that's the way of man. He's a hunter. He must see what is on the mind of God. He's not allowed to act independent of God. It is when God has moved, then he can move. He must be a reflector. A reflector of everything that God is doing. You are his image. He sent you to that family to represent him among the people of that family. You are his image. You are his image. He will think through your thoughts and speak through your vocal cords. He will open your eyes in dreams of the night to show you the things that he is doing. For as the father loved the son and showed him all the things that he doeth, he loves you. He loves you. And so he shows you. Show us, O oh Holy Ghost, that we may wander from the darkness into the light. Show us. Show us. Show us. And make such that are as great as David from our numbers. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, this brief moment we had, this moment of, that's not prayer. That thing you were doing there is haunting. There is a harmony in the spirit that you found and you jumped on it. And that harmony began to take you through wave. Yes, it's not prayer. It's hunting. We call it hunting. That is my terminology. Not in, it's not in the Bible. It's hunting. As long as you remain on that wave, your perception about what is on his heart will start becoming intensified. Oh my God. That's where wisdom is born. I just pray you, you, are, you, are, you can understand me. That's where it is born. That's the meaning of Anthropos. You are not looking to yourself. You are looking beyond yourself for light. That is how you were created. That's how the mighty emerge. When you look intently, you become changed to the image that you see. The image you see will start becoming real. Because he might show you on the crusade ground. Praying for the sick. And you, you, you can't even stand before the crowd. As you keep hunting. The things you see will become your reality. Yeah. That's how stammerers become preachers. That's how the weak things of this world will be used to confound the things that are mighty. Because we look beyond ourselves. 
For the Bible says that they looked unto him and they were radiant. And their faces were not ashamed. He will take shame from your life. Oh my God, everything that is designed to war, to bring injury to your destiny, he takes it away. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now I want to just obey him quickly. Give me a moment, like five minutes to obey him. Because I see that God wants to heal someone tonight. Not everybody. This person he wants to heal this person. There's an individual he wants to heal. And he will bring healing to you on your eyes. The reason why he wants to heal your eyes, your physical eyes, is because he also wants to heal your spiritual eyes. So after he has healed your physical eyes, I will pray for you. And the anointing will come upon you. Your spiritual eyes will begin to... So that you will know that what I'm saying is true. Are you, are you set for me? And so if there's anybody here that has a problem with your sight, lay your hands on your eyes. I just want to obey him, you know. It is not my will, but his. You are short-sighted, long-sighted, blind. Your eyes are weak. You cannot see from afar. Cataract has built up around your eyes. And the doctor says you need a surgery. But I want to pray with you, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I bind every blinding spirit. Blinding spirits be bound. Blinding spirits be bound. Come out of the eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. I break the yoke of blindness. Break the yoke of short-sightedness. Break the yoke of long-sightedness. Break the yoke of cataracts. Astigmatism. Weakness of the eyes. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Now I speak to those eyes in a moment of time and I command your eyes begin to see begin to see begin to see begin to see thank you remove your hand from your eyes and conduct a test on your eyes now the moment you notice that you can see come this way The moment you notice that there's an improvement on your vision, come, come this way. The moment you notice there is an improvement on your vision, go that way. The moment you notice there is an improvement on your vision, go this way. There's an improvement on your vision. So uh, our pastor will check you out and then we'll find out what is happening to you. The moment you notice there's an improvement on your vision, go that way. Because the Lord says, He will heal your natural eyes and then He will anoint you so that you can see through your spiritual eyes. There is a change in your sight. Come out here. There's a change in your sight. Come out here. When I'm done with this, then I will pray one more prayer. I will ask the presence of God to envelope this building so that everyone can feel the touch of God's reality. Yeah, he, will, he will come. He will come. I've seen it in the, in, in the spirit already. What I'm doing is not, it's not my own, you know? I've seen it. That's how to live. You see before you act. You perceive before you move. You understand before you say. Don't be in a hurry to say when you don't understand. God gave you a dream. He has not given you the meaning. Because you refuse to pray. But you are already sharing the dream. It means you cannot enter the wisdom that God is communicating. Yes, pastor, what's going on there? 
sir this uh, this lady's name is Nora she has had he, she had stroke in 2020 she had stroke yes in 2020 yes so, yes so since then she was unable to see since uh, then she's been unable to see yes until right now until right now yes sir your eyes open I was not able even to see the screen but after you have prayed so I've you, been could, you didn't know we had a screen here no, she, you couldn't I see it I knew there was a screen and I was seeing, but I was, it was, I was only seeing blood. I was not seeing Okay, anything. the screen was blurry. And then the Lord just touched her eyes. You know why? Are you with me? Yes, sir. You know I didn't touch her. It is him. He wants to heal. And he wants me to be part of the process. That's great honor. Because he can do it without me. Then he now reveals it to me. Do you know what? I want to heal. And that's what I saw when I was walking with Bishop on the street, just hunting. Then he showed me the meeting. And he said, he showed me praying for eyes. And it's only what I have seen that I will do. Do you understand this? That is what it means to be his image. She had stroke and it affected her eyes. Today, the Lord has given her Aside. Can we celebrate Jesus? Okay. Yes. This is Paris. Paris could not see uh, small numbers. But Couldn't see small numbers? Yeah, but now she's able to. She, she can see small numbers. Yeah. Can we celebrate Jesus? Yes. Uh, this is Sarah. Sarah. Sa yes. Sarah uh, received her miracle before you even began to pray. Before I began to pray, she yes, received sir. her miracle. While you were still teaching. Oh. While I was still teaching. Yes, sir. And your eyes, it affected your eyes. Short-sighted. You were short-sighted. And then blurry. You blurry. Know? So I started before, it's just somehow I thought I knew you would pray about it. I don't know why. And then I just tested my eyes no, before you, you prayed. No, you must know why. The reason why, <laughs> are you, you are a hunter too, like me. You are a hunter. So we know things that we were not taught. We understand things that we have not learned. It's tomorrow we'll go for the, the lectures. We need to. You know, this is, you were not here. You were in town. You were in the market. So I was trying to use scriptures to bring you back to the conference. But now that you are here, tomorrow we'll begin to build. There is a knowledge that is not sown on the soil of your soul. It is handed out by the Holy Ghost. Oh my God. Okay. Yes. What happened there? So this is Leticia. Natisha. Leticia, yes. Yeah. So yeah. she was seeing blurry images. Blurry images? Yes, but now she's able to see clearly. She can see clearly, yes. Can you salute Jesus for her? So this is Melanie. Okay. Uh, she had she couldn't see clearly as well, but she's been able to finally see us. Well. How many of you here use glasses? You use okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You see, so can you see? The secret for miracles is not a big deal. It's not even because there's a big preacher. No, it's not about the preacher. It's about the hunter. Can you hunt? Hunt that which is on the heart of God. If you hunt it, if you see what he's doing, indeed, he will do it because he's the one doing it. Are you there? All I am is a hunter. And I will never stand before you if I have not hunted because I will not have anything that he can back up. And I've seen great wonders, great signs, great miracles. And most of them are not even on tape. They are not on, they are not, they are, they are nowhere. It's only the people that saw it that knew that it happened. There is a story that God wants to tell through your life. Allow him. Yes. So this is Sylvia, this is Kazuri. They were both short-sighted. Short-sighted? Now they're able to see without their glasses. They can see without their glasses. Can you, can you, let me see your glasses. Okay, that's her own glasses. Short-sighted. I'm just showing you. Have we met before? Okay, so the miracles are not arranged. I didn't come to town yesterday night looking for who will come and testify. No, I was in Mombasa. We just got in today. And I've not had time to sleep. And I'm here on the platform. The only reason why I can come here is because I hunted. I searched for his heart. That's what wise men do. I don't do business until I've searched. I don't make friends until I... You can come and say, oh, 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 oh. I will go and search. Do you know him? 
and 60% of the time, people that come, he, he did not send them. And if you embrace them, you will be hot. You will, it's a prophecy, you will be hot. You will be hot. It's no longer what I want. It's no longer my will. I found a way he designed for us to live. It's a glorious life. Yes? This is given. Given? Given has been photophobic. Photophobic? Yes, he couldn't look at light without. In fact, he had a terrible headache just before you prayed. He had a terrible headache because he was looking at the light everywhere. It's bright here. Yes. So and the Lord, the Lord has Lord touched. Totally, what yes. of your head? Is this still there, the headache? One side is gone. I can only feel a mild. It's headache. remaining one side. Yes. Okay, no, there's no problem. Yeah. Who is that young man? Brian. This is Brian. Brian. Yes. My left eye. So his left eye was sick, but now he's. he's his left his eye head. was sick. What's the meaning of that? He wasn't seeing well. He couldn't, he couldn't see well using he his couldn't see eye. well with his left yes. eye and now the eye has been restored now listen so if i had god if it is true are you there because the lord spoke to me and said he will first heal their physical eyes that is the one he has healed many people but we are going to know the one that he's going to give spiritual eyes because he will anoint that person are you following test your hearing test it you say you heard something Ask God to prove it. Then your faith will become big. Then you know how to hunt thereafter. Are you with me? So Father, in the name of Jesus, that one among these brethren that you intend to give spiritual eyes, I ask, anoint that one as a sign. Anoint that one. Touch that one with the touch of the anointing. Anoint that one as a sign. So he's coming. If it's true, I have prayed. So now it's in his hands. He will determine whether or not. See, he's even anointing people in the congregation. And the prayer I prayed wasn't a big prayer. Watch, he will, he will pick one. I don't need to pray twice. I don't need to pray twice. The one he will anoint so that he or she will begin to see. The anointing will come. And in fact, it, it is increasing. 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 So, are you with me? Are you here? So, I want to pray now. Let his presence come down. Let him saturate this. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Oh my God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you reveal your presence in our midst. Reveal your presence in our midst. Reveal your presence in our midst. Let your presence become tangible. Let it be possible for everyone to sense your presence by his spirit. Let, let your presence, oh my God, let your presence become tangible. Let your presence become tangible. And let, let, let okay, yeah, it's coming. It's so, it's so strong. Let your presence become tangible so that, it, oh my God, 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 let it become so tangible, so tangible, so tangible. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let your presence fill this room.
Father, we thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you, Lord, because we have been created in your image to display you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we have prayed. All God's people said, Can we bless the Lord for the ministration that has gone ahead? Here? God is good.